So one of the improvements that I learned about today in PowerPoint 2010 is a pretty cool way to remove backgrounds from images. And here on this slide is a result of what I did with the tools that PowerPoint gives us. I had this image right here of this doctor and it actually started out with quite a dark background and I was able to knock that background out and place the picture into a different scene altogether. So you can see back here, this image of the hospital room is an entirely separate image. And these two images look pretty decent together. Now, if you've used PowerPoint 2007 before, which is what we've got right here, you might already know that there's an option in there to make parts of an image transparent, right? And a lot of times that works pretty well to take out the background of an image. So what I would usually try in PowerPoint 2007 is selecting the image and then coming up to the Format tab and then choosing Recolor. And right down here at the bottom is this option called Set Transparent Color. And in theory, once we've selected that, we can click in the background of the image and that'll cause the background to be invisible or transparent. But watch what happens when we do that in this image. You can see that PowerPoint doesn't really know what to do with the background of this image because the background is not really just one color. It's lots and lots of different colors or different you know, variations of this blue color. So it's not going to work very well to use that approach. So let's see what we can do with this in PowerPoint 2010. I'm going to switch to slide one, which has our initial untouched version of that image. So what we want to do is select the image and then choose the Format tab. And we've got this new button here on the toolbar called Remove Background. So I'm going to select that. And what PowerPoint does is it makes a guess as to what parts of the image we want to keep and what parts we want to get rid of. You can see that it didn't do a great job at the first pass here. What we, what we can do is help it out by changing these boundaries of the selection area. And as I do that, you can see that it kind of reinterprets the area that it thinks that we want to keep. And it's doing a pretty good job here. And that actually looks pretty good. I don't think that we even need to make really any adjustments there. It looks like it captured pretty much everything that we want in that image. So we'll go ahead and click Keep Changes. And there's our image without the background. And now what we can do is you know, move this onto whatever background we want to add it to. So there we are with the doctor in front of the, uh, in front of the hospital room. Now, not all images are going to be quite as straightforward as that. This is going to work best when you've got images where the background is, you know, fairly high contrast compared to the part of the image that you want to keep. Um, but there are some ways to fine tune the selections too if it doesn't do a great job initially. Like, let's look at this example of this image of this little boy. What we can do is do the same thing we did earlier, choose the Format tab and then Remove Background. And then we're going to drag these boundaries to kind of frame up this selection a little bit better. And it's doing okay so far. And it looks like it got pretty much everything. I can see down here his shoes don't look quite right. Those are pink, which means that that part would be removed. We don't want that. So what we can do is come up to the toolbar and choose Mark Areas to Keep. And then we can you know, click on those areas that are pink right now that we want to actually preserve in our image. So that looks pretty good. I can see that back here though, there's um, part of the pavement is, uh, is going to be retained as well, so we want to get rid of that. What we want to do now is come up to the toolbar and choose Mark Areas to Remove, and then we can click in those spots to get rid of the parts that we don't want to um, retain in the image. And sometimes it takes a little bit of extra clicking, but this looks pretty good, so we'll go ahead and see how that turned out. And that looks, that looks okay. I think that we could use that in you know, a scene, drop it into a background or whatever. Now this is still not going to give you the kind of precision that you would get in a dedicated image editing tool. But for a lot of images, like the one that we see here and like that image of the doctor, it actually works pretty well. And it does you know, save you the time of having to launch a whole separate application and monkey around with you know, lots of windows open and different files to manipulate. So with just a few clicks, it's definitely worth trying if you want a real quick and easy way to get rid of backgrounds from your images.